Hello and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Ned. I am a technical evangelist here at Caspio and today I am excited to demo an application to you that utilizes approval workflows and to show you how you might be able to use Caspio to create something for something like this for your own internal purposes and needs. Now I do realize that we probably have a lot of new prospects in the webinar looking at Caspio for the very first time. Uh, please note that the demonstration of today's application uh, will be somewhat fast-paced to showcase the capabilities of the platform, but also please don't let that distract you from the fact that the Caspio platform is actually very easy to use, and we do have a lot of training materials available on our uh, YouTube channel and other places to help you with the learning curve and to speed up your knowledge of the actual Caspio platform. Uh, now, with that said, before we begin, let's take a quick look at our agenda for today's webinar. Initially, we'll spend some time looking at the application overview. Uh, what I'll be doing is going back and forth between my flowchart and the actual live application so that you can follow along in the workflow as we make changes in our live application. Then I'll show you how we linked our database tables together, along with explaining some of the key concepts that were used to create the approval workflow. After that, I'll go through the design of each table and explain how the user roles were defined. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and edit the application inside Caspio to show you some of these key concepts and how they were used to set up the approval workflow. Uh, note that we won't have the time to show you all the features of this application in today's webinar. However, this app will be available for download and you will be able to import it to your account to get the sense of how the application was built. And the webinar is also being recorded. We are going to make this webinar available on our YouTube channel, and we will send you a link to the video so you can watch it later at your own pace if you'd like. And lastly, we'll open up the line for a Q&A session at the very end. So feel free to submit your questions along the way, and our team or myself will get to them either throughout the webinar or at the very end. Now, let me go ahead and kick off this webinar by making two very quick announcements. Uh, the first announcement is regarding our new on-site training that we launched this year. This is a two-day training program designed to teach you the fundamental concepts of using Caspio. Uh, by the end of the training program, you will have the knowledge of knowing how to develop an entire application from scratch, and we'll have run through an application planning session particular to your own use case. Now this is quite powerful to be able to speak to someone face to face and have this person actually help you with the best practices and to help you plan out your own application workflow. And Jason Johnson, who happens to be our manager of user education and who many of you have probably worked with in the past, is in today's webinar. And I'd like to have him actually speak a little bit more about the on-site training. So Jason, if you will. Hello everyone, thanks for attending the webinar today. I just want to quick give you an overview. This training is going to be two days of instructor-led high-level demonstrations, lectures, and some group and individual exercises. The goal here is to really give you a solid understanding of the power of the Caspio platform. Uh, this collaborative environment is going to let us have some peer-to-peer -peer discussions, some hands-on experience, and we're really going to build an application from the ground up. Uh, going through the full design process and build. Uh, for this training, it is a $1,200 registration fee for each attendee. Uh, for corporate level accounts and above, that first attendee can register at no charge. Each additional attendee for any would be $900. We will be hosting this training here in Santa Clara, California. And if you wanted more information regarding the, this training, at the end of the webinar, we're going to have a survey where you can indicate that. But once again, thank you all for attending and back to the webinar. All right, thank you, Jason. And for our second announcement of today's webinar is I'd like to actually uh, just bring up Caspio's professional services. For those of you who don't have the resources to build an app or time to learn how to use the Caspio platform, uh, you can provide us with your own specs and our professional services team will provide you with a quote and a time frame to get your application developed. And uh, what's nice is uh, by teaming up with the professional services team, you'll have access to highly skilled database experts who will take care of the design and the build of your applications. Uh, our experience and expertise also allows our developers to design, develop, and de deploy your applications very quickly, which means that you'll accelerate the speed to market and deliver better services to your customers. I think it's also worth mentioning that your applications will always be future-proofed, ensuring that with each release, your applications will be maintained and up to date. And if you ever have any questions or need any help with your applications, you'll have access to our technical support team that will be reinforced by our professional services team. Now, if this is something that's of interest to you, 
then go ahead and fill out the form on our professional services page and let's find out if uh, your application that you're trying to build is going to be a good fit for the Caspio platform. Now I also want to mention that if you, uh, we do have a lot of resources to help you along the way as you start to develop your Caspio applications. And if you're more of a do-it-yourself type, then I would suggest to attend our weekly web-based training sessions that are also hosted by Jason. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube channel and find more videos there. And you can also visit our knowledge base uh, for additional written articles and tutorials. If you're new to Caspio, then I do recommend that perhaps you can sign up for a 14-day trial account to test out the platform and see how quickly you can build your own applications using Caspio's point-and-click methodology. So here is the actual workflow that I have created for us today in the webinar. Uh, the approval workflow actually makes use of a few key Caspio concepts, namely record level security and the use of criteria in reports. The combination of these concepts allows for limiting the next step available options and what records each role can view in the process. In a future webinar, we will be using triggered actions as a mechanism to control the status change. This will allow modification based on conditional behaviors and will also demonstrate the upcoming feature of triggered SMS and emails. Let me just give you a quick general scope of the workflow that we have today. Um, so if you look on the left hand side, you're going to be able to see customers and really it's, a bit, it's about submitting a request and going through that process of from one representative to another person until that request is actually approved. So as a customer, we have limited functionality. We can log in and we can submit a request for service. Once that request is submitted, if you follow the arrow, it's going to end up in a bucket or a queue of a service representative. And now a service representative here has the ability to assign these requests to themselves. So if I'm a service rep and if I assign this request to myself, from there I can manage the request and I can submit that request for approval. So once I submit that request for approval, it's going to go into the bucket of the approving manager. And then from there, the approving manager has three options. If I'm looking at this request, I have the option to either decline that request, approve the request, or have the request be resubmitted for approval. If I resubmit that for approval, it ends up back into the service rep's bucket in their dashboard. And now they have to make a few additional modifications before they once again resubmit the request for approval. And just by looking at this illustration, you can see a nice cycle, what happens with a request and how it actually goes back and forth between the service rep and the approving manager until that request is finally approved. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's webinar, how we actually set up some of these uh, key concepts inside the platform. So what I'll do now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I'm going to go back and forth between the live application and this flowchart so that you can follow along in the process. And we're very simply going to begin with the customers. So let's log in as a customer in our live example. And in this example, we have set up a customer login as Ken at test.com. And as soon as I log in as Ken, you get to see the submission form where a customer now can fill out this form and submit that request for service. So let's try something like a new install. And then we'll add some comments as a customer and we'll say, Okay, so we'll submit that request. Upon submission, you get to see this confirmation message. So let's go back to our flowchart to see what happens next. Once that request is submitted, we should now be able to log in as a service rep to be able to retrieve that request. Now keep in mind that we don't have this enabled for today's demo, but you can have email notifications go out as soon as the request is submitted. If a request is approved, decline, you can notify multiple people via email once something actually happens in the entire workflow. So you can have these multiple emails go out at any time. So let's log in as the service rep now. So I'm going to log out as the customer and I will log in as a service rep. And in this example, we have a service rep called Tyler. And as soon as I log in as Tyler, I get to see a, a queue or a bucket where I can see all these new requests that are coming in from the customer. And here's the latest request that came in from Ken. Now, if I want to assign this request to myself as a service rep, I can check off that request. I can click on this link. 
And to assign this to myself, all I need to do is change the service status from new to pending review. And upon update, we no longer see that request because this, this bucket here is only for new requests. Now, if I want to manage the request that I assigned to myself, I have this simple navigation menu that I created for us today where we can access one report from the other. And you can also modify this navigation menu. You can make it look at any way that you want, but I have a very simple drop down effect that allows me to toggle back and forth between my data pages. I'm going to go to manage requests now. And I should be able to find that request right over here as a pending review. So there's that request. Now, as a service rep, if I want to actually submit this request for approval from the approving manager, all I need to do is go to details. And I need to fill out some information here before I submit it for approval. So let's just put in some notes here. And I'll be, let's just say I'll be visiting this customer on Saturday. Even though that the customer requested today, we're gonna to go ahead and visit the customer on a Saturday. We're gonna set up that appointment for this coming Saturday, and I'm going to select Submit it for approval. Upon update, I no longer see that pending review. Now that I've submitted this for approval, let's go back to our wor uh, workflow. And the next step is for the approving manager to be able to log in and retrieve that data. Okay, and then from there, the approving manager will have a few options. So let's take a look. We're going to log out as the service rep and very simply log in as the approving manager. And in this example, Jane happens to be our approving manager. So let's log in and I should be able to find that request that was submitted not only by the um, service rep, but we also know who was the customer to submit that request. So as the approving manager, we can go to details. I get to see all the information submitted from the customer. I also get to see all the information submitted from the uh, service rep. And now as the approving manager, I can input my own notes. And you'll see in this dropdown that the approving manager has a couple of options. I can approve the request. I can decline that request. But let's see what happens if I have, if I select resubmit for approval. I'm going to add some notes as the manager and say, please add more notes and hit update. Of course, we no longer get to see that request in our bucket, so let's go ahead and log out as the approving manager, and let's log in as the service rep, who once again happens to be Tyler. Now, I should be able to find that back in my manage requests bucket, so let's click on that link, and here are all of the ones that are resubmitted for approval, and I should be able to find the same request in this bucket, so now as the service rep, I can look at the manager's comments below and I can modify my request to add more notes and upon submission, submit it for approval. Once again, hit update. I no longer see that in my bucket. And just to complete the process, let, process let's log out, log back in as the approving manager one more time. And here is that request. Now, if I look at the details once again, notes look great. I'm going to go ahead and just approve that request, hit update, let's log out, log back in one more time as the service rep, and I should be able to find that approved request in this bucket. And here are all of the requests that have been approved and declined by the approving manager. And as a service rep for this demo, we've actually enabled this so everyone can see all of the uh, requests submitted by all of the service reps. And if we look in here, we're going to be able to find that request that has been approved by the approving manager. And again, like, like I said just a couple of minutes ago, you can have email notifications go out upon each submission or update to notify the, uh, the next user who needs to log in and retrieve the request. Now, in this example, we did set this up for IT technicians to go out in the field. So that's the use case that we're doing here. But keep in mind that this workflow can be applied to any type of an application or use case that you decide. It just depends on your internal needs and what kind of workflow you would like to have in your application. Okay, so now what I would like to do is log into Caspio to show you how we actually set something like this up. The first thing that I would like to show you is the table relationships. 
Okay, that's the critical part of building any application inside Caspio. You have to define the relationship first because that is the foundation to make sure that all the other forms and reports function correctly. And just by looking at this schema here, we have our customer table that stores all the customer information. When a customer submits a request, that request is stored inside the service request table. We're also stamping the customer ID into that table because we would like to know what customer is actually submitting that request. We have our employee table, and the employee table is going to contain all of your service reps and all of your managers. Once the employee assigns that request to themselves, we're going to be stamping that employee's ID as a service rep ID in the request table because we want to be able to tell which employee or which service rep is actually assigning that request to themselves. Once the approving manager approves or declines or resubmits the request for approval, we want to be able to stamp the manager's ID in this table as well. Again, because again, we want to be able to track and see which approving manager is actually approving these requests. And then we have our four table, which I like to call the driver table. This is a lookup table that's going to store all of your statuses for requests and also all the all the all of the roles of each one of our employees. And based on the role that's logged into the application, we're going to be limiting this status from the lookup table. In other words, if I log in as a manager, I'm going to be able to see a certain status. If I log in as the or the service rep, I'll be able to see a different status from this lookup table. Okay, so now let me show you the tables that we have in this application. Let's quickly go through each one of the tables so that you can see how they were configured. So here's my customer table. And inside the customer table, we have our typical fields. We're going to have the customer ID, which is a mandatory field. That's a primary key to identify each customer in the database. And then we have the email and password credentials to log into the application. Now, you can have other attribute fields here if you'd like. It really just depends on what kind of information you want to collect from your customers. Let's go to our employee table next. Okay, once again, we have the unique ID enabled in this table. Each employee should have a unique ID to identify them. Uh, we have the email and password once again, and very, very important field here called role. This field is going to be uh, used to identify and differentiate your approving managers from your service reps. So if I look at the data sheet tab, you'll see that in this example, we have three employees. And based on that field, we know who the manager is, and we know who our two service reps are. Okay, so that's the role field. Let's go to our third table. And this table is gonna be uh, more or less your main table that stores all the service request information. So you'll see that each request will have its own unique ID. We have a customer ID field in this table as well. Again, we wanna be able to stamp the customer's ID in this table because as I said before, we wanna be able to track and know who was the customer that submitted that request so that we can associate the request to the customer. We can select the service type, all troubleshooting uh, type of service that they can select. We can add our comments. Here's my service rep ID because when I assign this request to myself as the service rep, I wanna be able to stamp my ID in this table to associate the request to the employee. We have the approving manager ID as well, because when the um, approving manager approves the request, we wanna be able to stamp their ID in this table as well, along with manager comments and every time we're tracking when something was updated in the application. And the last table that I wanna show you is the lookup table. Now this table is very important. And what you'll notice in this table is that we have the status and you may have recognize some of these status options based on the live application that we just looked at. And we also have the role field in this table as well. And what you'll notice here is, again, depending on the role that's logged into the application. So if I'm logged in as the rep, I'm gonna be able to see these two options. Conversely, if I'm logged in as a manager, I'm gonna be able to see these three options in the dropdown. So we are basically limiting the status options available to us depending on the role inside the application. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is show you some of these data pages so that you can see how they were configured for the live example that we just looked at. 
And let's begin with the customers first. But before I show you that, let's log in as the customer. So if you recall this submission form for a customer to be able to submit a request, so that is the submission form. Now let me show you what the data page looks like inside Caspio. So let's open up the folder and very simply just click on edit. So we're using the right authentication here for customers to be able to log in with their email and password. We have selected the fields that we would like to have in our submission form. And what you'll notice here is we have the customer ID field and what we're doing is using the authentication method to stamp the customer's ID in the uh, service requests table. And very important is the service status field and what you'll notice here is we're hiding that field and using a default value set as new. So if you look at my submission form, that service field is hidden, but behind the scenes, it's by default, it's stamping the status as new. So each request that's at submitted will be flagged as a new request. So once that request is submitted and flagged as new, then when we log in as the service rep, the first thing that we'll be able to see on our dashboard is all of the requests that are flagged as new. So let's take a look at this data page inside Caspio. And that's going to be inside my employee folder. And this is the data page, pick new service request. So let's click edit. So we have the authentication applied here to log in as a service rep. We're using a filtered reports, a report based on predefined criteria. We're going to hit next. And then we're using the service status field as the filtering field. And on this screen, what you'll notice now is that we're actually assigning a value of new. So in other words, what this means is show me all of the data from the table that's flagged as new. This is the reason why on the front end, in the report itself, you're going to be able to see all of the requests that are flagged as new. Now, the way that we set this up to assign these requests to ourselves, so when I select this checkbox and click on bulk edit, the way that's set up is if I click next, these are my results page fields. We have the bulk edit checkbox enabled. And on the screen where we configure the bulk edit, the first thing that we're doing is hiding a service rep ID field and using the authentication method to stamp the ID of the employee into the service requests table. This is how we're able to assign this request to ourselves. And then here's my service status field where I can simply select this from new to pending review. So I'm using a static value here to simply assign this request to myself. And this is why in this dropdown, you're able to see from new, which is the default value. I can assign this to pending review. And as soon as I hit update, the reason why you no longer see it in this list is because this list is only being filtered based on the new value. And because I just assigned pending review, I no longer see it inside this bucket. So the next step is to actually log in as a approving manager. who is Jane, is to be able to find that request that was just submitted. So let me go ahead and cancel here to show you that data page as well. So this time we're going to go ahead and take a look at this data page for the approving manager and click edit. So let's hit next, next. Next, there's my service status field. And what you're going to see here is that once that's actually submitted for approval, uh, this report is going to filter out all of the records from the table that are flagged as submitted for approval. This is the reason why this report here is actually going to show you all of the requests that have that particular status. Now, one thing that I want to show you in the details view as an approving manager when I click on this link, this drop down here. Notice that I'm not looking at all of the statuses from that lookup table. The statuses are actually limited based on my role. So if I go to the details view of that data page,
and we scroll down here where we find that service status field. Here I have selected, created a dropdown, and I have selected my lookup table that contains all the statuses. And it's supposed to list me all the statuses. However, using the security tab and enable this limit lookup based on user identity, this is what I talked about before. Depending on the role that you are in the employee table, so if you're the service rep or if you're a manager, and we have the second dropdown configured correctly as well, remember that the lookup table also has the role field. This is the reason why it's limited because my lookup table is only showing me the status based on the role that's logged into the application. In other words, when I look at this dropdown now, I'm seeing limited statuses to what the approving manager can do. Okay, because that lookup table is now just filtering the status based on the role. And now I can go ahead and approve this request, decline it, or resubmit for approval. Okay, the one more thing that I wanted to show you on the employee side is let's say, for example, the approving manager says, well, let's go ahead and resubmit this for approval, okay, which is for Jamie Richards. It's for troubleshooting. We're going to click on update. Let's log back in one more time as Tyler. I wanted to show you one last data page here. So I will log in as Tyler. I will go to my bucket where I manage my requests, and I will be able to find that resubmit for approval from Jamie Richards. Okay, so let me show you this data page. In the employee folder. And this is the data page that it's allowing the service reps to manage all of the assigned service requests. So we're going to click edit here as well. All right, so in this data page, we're actually using record level security. Okay, record level security allows us to see just certain information from the table that's linked to our specific ID. Remember how we changed the status to pending review, from new to pending review on that report using bulk edit? Well, there we're actually stamping the ID of the employee in the service request table. And now thanks to record level security, we can just filter out those requests that belong to our employee ID. And when you configure these two drop downs correctly, that, that report is just going to show you the requests that belong to that ID. And then on the following screen, we're using the same field for predefined criteria to actually filter out the requests. And what you'll notice on this screen that we're using two criteria to filter out the requests. I'm gonna look at the logic tab. And the type of requests that we wanna filter out are all the ones that are flagged as pending review or resubmit for approval. And that's the reason why in this report we're able to see a group report that shows us all the ones that are pending and all the ones that need to be resubmitted for approval because we're using the logic tab to just filter out one or the other. And this is why in this bucket we're able to see that. 